All right, people. We at African Heritage Day right now. My man giving out the information. He's showing the books. The first and only black man ever to translate the, the, the Angel, the Book of Revelations, the book that was given to Jesus from two languages, Greek and Arabic. The first and only black man ever to translate the ancient Egyptian Book of the Dead. Oh, the Book of the Dead, that's serious. I, I had a Book of the Dead. Right? The first and only black man ever to translate the cuneiform text, the Holy Tablets. 76 trillion year history of the brown skin people. This book basically breaks everything down. And everything. From the very beginning, when everything was just gas. Mm. How it became this and how we came to this place we're at now. Oh, that's that real and knowledge right there. We will, we will eventually come out of it. So, Kiara just told me to bring some books. I just brought what I, what I, what I had. So, um, you got a question, anything you want to ask, sir? I'll, I'll do my best to answer. You can't get these. Huh? You can't get these. You, these books are not going to be readily available. I got a lot of these I've been carrying around for 20 years already. Um, but you can get them in a PDF form. The only problem with the PDF form is that you need one of these books in order to read what you got. And okay, this is the actual book itself, so I have to read it. Okay, if this is okay, then you move on to the next page, and then you move on to the next page. The problem with the computer system the beast can get in there and change up things. Okay. So you kind of need a teacher to kind of show you something. Yeah, thing. yeah. So this is a, th th these things are some of the most powerful stuff I've ever, I, I was here for, uh, well, Nation Islam with uh, Abu Lai Muhammad. My sister got married uh, to a brother from Nation Islam. I watched it, incredible growth. I, I was I was very proud to be a black when I found that Jesus was a, a, indeed a black man. Yeah. Tell me this real quick for yeah. video purposes. What's this right here so the people can see what you're selling out here? What's these? Oh, these are incense, black soap. Um, so, uh, yeah. uh, fans. I didn't bring my shea butter today. But that's okay. basically it. I used to sell the oils, but it became too cumbersome. It's a lot, got, it's a a lot, lot going on. It's a lot to do. I got you. I got you. And, then, ooh. and so. Are these for sale? No. Oh. Uh, we got candy for the kids out here. Bring your kids out. Let them get some candy. Got these ladies. They did a great job. So, we got pencils and pens and more stuff in here so bring your kids out there's some more information mm, they're teaching about the art and how it's connected understand the real science of these signs they're not just it's not just a, a cross it's the real science of the human body she has some jewelry and stuff set up out here. She's selling. She got the. I saw her before. And we got Kiro over here with her, her, her nice vegan food. Kiro, can you tell the people something real quick? Give them a look. What you got going on with your plants? And I see you got a lot going on over here. Okay, I got lemon tree. Right. I got an orange tree, I got my body butter, I got my co um, charcoal face mask. So this body butter right here? That's body butter. Alright. That's charcoal. And tea tree oil. And that's carrot, tea tree oil. Okay, alright. Okay. Black women in our end. Oh, so you use that for your hair? Sure. I ain't ready for the food. Let me fix it. You ain't ready for food yet? Okay. Alright, alright. Come back, come back. Alright. So you got the kids out here eating, getting their free breakfast. That's the Wayne, little boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I love that little kid. And I and this is set up over here. We got my man Huey P. Yep. We got O'Neal right here, the snitch. The snitch. I'm looking for everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We got Fred Hampton. We got Bobby Seals. Bobby Seals. And we got 
Eldridge right here. Yeah, Eldridge, what's going on, people? Going Eldridge on? right here trying to get busy. Yeah, yeah job, we took uh, we to give some information out to the people today. Mm -hmm. A lot of things these people don't know about us. You know, the government, they try to make people look at us one way, but we finna give them the truth. Can you dig it? I can dig it. I can no, dig no, it. Man. So who came up with the idea to give them keys to breakfast? Give the keys to breakfast? Yeah. yeah. Pantherwise or kings wise? Pelt wise. Pelt wise. That was me, that was me and old uh, Huey, man. Yeah. Who came up with the idea to feed the, feed the kids? It, it was actually Bobby, Bobby Seals' main idea in, in the 10 point country. Now I heard Bobby could cook a little bit. Is that true, Bobby? Yeah, I could do a little something. Do a little something? Yeah, on the grill. Okay. A few, a few hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> would, would you put a lot of salt on it? Not too much salt. Not man. too much salt? That pressure run, run in our, in our um, Okay. And our culture as well. And our culture, we you know, we have to try to make sure that our people are eating right, so their brains can function properly. Right. Can you dig it? I can dig it. I can dig it. Now, I got a picture of you over the wall over there. They assassinate you three days before they try to assassinate me. Yes, sir. What's up, man? Hey, the same way. The same way. William O'Neill, drug. Telling on people. You would think I would wake up, but I didn't. Why? Because he drugged you. He drugged you. So, the mother of my child tried to wake me up. She shook me. Wake up, Chairman. Wake up, Chairman. But I was too groggy to get up. Pigs came in there, shot me dead in the head. Just like that. Shame what happened to him. Hey, you just doing your job, though. Yeah? Just doing your job. Trying to be charged. Trying to be charged and have to wait. He could have asked for that. I got into Chicago. But, um. Uh, so you didn't really, you didn't really want to do it. You were just trying to protect yourself. Well, once I became involved, I thought I was the FBI. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought I was one of them. You, you got a pension? Yeah, I got a pension. You got a pension? That's me. Because I was head security. See? That's me right there. Mm hmm. That's me right there, too. After the agency, after everything was over with, that's me right there too. Yeah. That means the young man, and I was still with the Panthers doing my informant work. Mm. Yeah, but I thought I was one of them guys. I really did. But really, they were just using. They were using. Like they did most of us. It was a lot of us informants. I was the only yeah. one. I had four on my case. I had four on my case. So, so you got your spear over here. You got the chair over here. You ready to get started? Yes, sir. You know, most of my most of my time, I never really, I really didn't. Even though I started the started the Panthers, I was in jail most of the time. I heard you was a high head. Oh yeah, I'm the one that got it popping. As they say today. I'm the one that got it popping. But, but I, I also heard you was kind of smart though. You, you kind of knew what you were doing or you, you studied law or something like that? Yeah, I uh, uh, studied law. Oh, that's where I met Bobby Seale. You know, so that's, so that's, that's where you met Bobby? That's where I met Bobby in college. You know, I taught myself how to read, read and write before I went to college. You know, I went eight, you know, I didn't really didn't go to school, but I was able to, you know, elementary school or whatever. But I taught myself how to read and write before. Uh -huh. you know. and then Bobby, Bobby ran for for mayor, didn't he? Yeah, seventy three. Not seventy three. Seventy three. Right, right before I start start fooling with y'all. Oh, yeah, well, I had, I had I the fooling y'all in seventy three. I had, I had, I had to hit, put out on him too. I heard you put a head on a bunch of folks. Yeah, I put out after my um, first incarceration. I got out. I put a head out on on his lady. You know, uh, for for that like leadership. And then uh, the actual lady that was um, uh, wind up marrying me, she was in. She was on the way to lead the Black Panthers. Uh -huh. But she didn't follow my orders. So when I got out, I put it. I put the. I put the head out on this lady. Show it, show them what time it was that I still, so, still was in charge. Look, you a little dangerous. I'm gonna slide that way. <laughs> I can tell you a little dangerous. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang over here by because Fred brought the people together. Fred was so dangerous. That's why Fred was so dangerous because he understood that you shouldn't be hating somebody just because of the color of their skin. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? He understood it was a bigger problem. He understood the problem was classism first, and racism was a product of classism. 
You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So the people at the top, they want you to hate somebody because of the color of their skin. They want you, the black person, to hate the white person. They want the white person to hate the Latino person. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? They want the Latino person to hate the hillbilly. But he was bringing them together. He coined the term Rainbow Coalition, a term which Reverend Jesse Jackson continued to use throughout his career. Mm -hmm. But Fred Hampton coined that term. You know what I'm saying? He understood that it was a big problem. It was much more bigger than the racism. And he understood that racism was just a function of that class system. You know what I'm saying? You had the haves and you had the have nots. This pot over here with the have nots, much bigger than this pot over here with the haves. But these folks who had money, you know what I'm saying, who had the power, they wanted to keep these people fighting each other. That's why mm -hmm. Fred Hampton was so dangerous because he was a very charismatic leader and he had support from all kinds of folks black, white, yellow, red, you know what I'm saying? You often hear him saying, Black power to black people, brown power to brown people, red power to red people, yellow power to yellow people, white now, power to white people. Now, and tell me this. Tell me this. Is this true? I heard your son was like, after you was murdered, yes, and your sir. son mm -hmm. came of age, he was framed and locked yes, up too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because he had your blood. Oh, yes, sir. You want to kill him? You know what I'm saying? In fact, <laughs> Coin Tell Pro, which is a counterintelligence program organized by the FBI under the leadership of J. Edgar Hoover, <laughs> their main goal was to stop the rise of a black society. And they want to do that by any means necessary. That's why they rushed up in my apartment and shot me. Mm -hmm. After he drove. After he drove. Okay. So our own, our own drugged us. Back? Told him where you were sleeping at. In the bed, bro. Right? And you were executed. Sleeping in the bed, shot in the head. How much they pay? How much they pay? 300. They paid me 300 dollars to do all that. You got a cool 300. Sometimes 500, but they gave me 300 dollars. And I heard at the end of the day, you couldn't live with yourself. No. I wind up running on the freeway, jumping in the middle of traffic. Kill myself. And I heard that was the second time you tried to kill yourself because you couldn't deal with it. It was. Turn finally achieved my goal. Sap suckers like you. You can read. I'm going to tell y'all. I'm going to tell y'all something. This man right here is a great man. When I was in prison, he gave me his daughter. Poor that fucking fuck. He gave me his, his daughter hand in marriage. And we kept the family. We this definitely kept the bloodline tight. Now, I want to say that I necessarily gave her to you. You know, if you wasn't the man that you are, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have uh, had the opportunity to be with her. I agree. Hey, brother Elvin. Tell him how you ran, brother. Tell him how you ran. <laughs> Let me tell you something, sucker. <laughs> I, ain't never, I ain't never ran nowhere. What I was doing, I was trying to expand the organization. So what I did, I chose. I chose to not go back to jail. I wasn't going back to jail no more. But what I did do, I set up an ambush. Yeah, and it was me. It was me and little Bobby Hutton. And I hate what happened to little Bobby Hutton. Tell him how you seen that up, old man out there first. I ended up, I ended up over there in Algeria. And I set up headquarters over there. What did you do, sucker? Got shot in the head. I, I, I guess you should have came to Algeria with me then, huh? I was, I was in Tanzania doing my thing when I got my $4.5 million for the government for wrongly incarcerated me for 27 years. Solitary. I took my money over there and I started building wells and stuff, building up the up the city, up the country. I don't know what you were doing over there. <coughs> well, you know, me, I was impressed by the way North Korea, by the way that they had their government going over there. You know, they had uh, a bunch of different programs going on over there. You know, they had uh, free food, free food programs going on over there. They had a lot of uh, different workshops and initiatives. They had free medication going on over there. So I was really impressed by that, and I wanted to try to incorporate some of that into our organization. So that's what I was trying. To do. That's why. That's why I set up here. Well, well, why you don't like Huey though? Me, Huey. Well, let me tell you about Huey. Now, Huey was when when I first became Hewitt. a part of this organization. Huey, come over here. Huey was one of the strongest members of this organization. You know, he was willing to go against the establishment, to go against the people. Uh -huh. But for some reason, when Huey got locked up and he came back out, he was willing to work with the white people. <coughs> Myself, I wanted to continue the guerrilla warfare. Because that's what I'm all about. So, he, you want to, you, you lock, I heard when you got locked up, you kind of got a little soft on Yeah, when I came out, I, I, I said,